Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about Rima glottidis. Now Rima glottidis is an anteroposterior cleft between two vocal cords in front and two arytenoid cartilages behind. It is considered to be the narrowest part of the laryngeal cavity and by and large it is subdivided into two parts. The anterior 3 fifth is intermembranous part and posterior 2 fifth is intercartilaginous part. Obviously intercartilaginous part means the portion of the rima glottidis between two adjacent medial surfaces of arytenoid cartilage. So these two are arytenoid cartilages and this will be the vocal processes and this will be the muscular processes these are medial surfaces these are anterolateral surfaces and behind will be the posterior surface this dark spot suggestive of orientation of cricoarytenoid joint which is the which is a synovial joint between cricoid lamina and base of arytenoid cartilage now this joint permits rotatory movement as well as gliding movement so this is in brief about the arytenoid cartilage similarly these two are the vocal folds now vocal fold is formed by vocal ligament which is nothing but upper free margin of cricovocal membrane and later it is accompanied by vocalis muscle together they are covered by non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium so this is the intermembranous part of rima glottidis now in quiet breathing the intermembranous part is triangular and intercartilaginous part is quadrangular so overall shape of rima glottidis during quiet breathing is pentaconal now there are muscles working on the arytenoid cartilages they will rotate and glide the arytenoid cartilages and as per our need the shape will change from normal pentagonal to something else so let's see how the shape changes and for what purpose now before going to that let's see some of the muscles or some of the important muscles working on arytenoid cartilage now as we have discussed this spot belongs to the crico arytenoid joint and that permits rotatory as well as gliding movement this is a synovial joint now this is a muscular process and in front of the muscular process there is attachment of lateral cricoarytenoid which will produce adduction of intermembranous part of rima glottidis by rotating the arytenoid cartilages at this joint and that is antagonized by posterior cricoarytenoid muscles which are attached behind the muscular process and that will rotate the arytenoid cartilage is back to antagonize lateral cricoarytenoid. Basically, this posterior cricoarytenoid is having two types of fibers, upper horizontal and lower vertical. So upper horizontal fibers will rotate the arytenoid cartilages and they will antagonize lateral cricoarytenoid. Whereas lower vertical fibers will glide this arytenoid cartilages laterally and that will increase gap between the intercartilaginous part and that is antagonized by transverse arytenoid muscle and oblique arytenoid muscles over here so by and large these are the important muscles working on rima glottidis now in whispering voice we need to approximate or adduct only intermembranous part without affecting intercartilaginous part and that is produced by contraction of lateral cricoarytenoids from in front and they will rotate the muscular processes of the arytenoid cartilage in such a way that the shape of rima glottidis will assume inverted funnel from normal pentagonal and that is counteracted at the end by upper horizontal fibers of posterior cricoarytenoid and they will bring back the normal pentagonal shape from inverted funnel so normal pentagonal shape of rima glottidis is achieved now when we want to produce high pitch sound what we need to do is we need to approximate and adduct both intermembranous and intercartilaginous part now that is achieved by simultaneous contraction of lateral cricoarytenoid as well as transverse and oblique arytenoid now lateral cricoarytenoid will adduct intermembranous part by rotating the arytenoid cartilages and transversus and oblique arytenoid 
will adduct and approximate intercartilaginous part of rima glottidis by gliding these two arytenoid cartilages at the cricoarytenoid joint and the rima glottidis will assume a linear chink or slit shape from normal pentagonal shape so at the end or during the high pitch sound we need to approximate vocal fold in such a way that the expiring air will vibrate this vocal cord and the sound is produced now at the end of speech or during the speech we need to take a pause to abduct the vocal cord to increase the space of the rima glottidis to take inspiration and that is produced by simultaneous contraction of both the fibers of posterior cricoarytenoid so upper horizontal fibers will rotate the arytenoid cartilages and lower vertical fibers will glide the arytenoid cartilages in such a way that the rima glottidis will assume pentagonal shape again from linear chink so a normal pentagonal shape of the rima glottidis is achieved at the end of speech or during taking pause in between the speech now during the act of forceful inspiration when we want to take more air the sustained contraction of posterior cricoarytenoid will further abduct the rima glottidis and the shape will change from normal pentagonal to diamond shape you can clearly make out that upper horizontal fibers of posterior cricoarytenoid will rotate the muscular processes in such a way that maximum air can be taken and the shape of rima glottidis changes from pentagonal to diamond shape now this is assumed by contraction of upper horizontal fibers of posterior cricoarytenoid only if it keeps on contracting then lower vertical fibers of posterior cricoarytenoid will glide both the arytenoid cartilages apart and in such a way that maximum space of rima glottidis is achieved and from pentagonal shape it will assume enlarged triangular shape this is counteracted at the end by both lateral cricoarytenoid and transverse and oblique arytenoid in such a way that from enlarged triangular or diamond shape it will assume again back to the pentagonal shape so a normal pentagonal shape of rima glottidis is achieved so by and large we have seen so many different shapes of rima glottidis let's revise them quickly normal shape is pentagonal during quiet breathing the intermembranous part is triangular intercartilaginous part is quadrangular during whispering voice it assumes inverted funnel shape during high pitch sound it assumes linear chink or slit and during force inspiration full inspiration it changes into diamond shape and further it changes into and last triangular shape so these are differences in shapes of rima glottidis hope you understood well thanks for watching